This is English shorthand dictation number 233 and the dictation speed is 160 words per minute. Start. Honorable Chairman Sir, I had come with a prepared speech to support the bill. But after hearing my learned friend, I am in utter confusion whether to support the bill or to oppose the bill. I think that the government will clarify the position. The Honorable Minister will clarify the position. Then we will make up our mind. As has been rightly pointed out by my Honorable Friend, if it is to invalidate the judgment of the Supreme Court, then the law cannot be said to be a good law. The pertinent question to be discussed here is the benefit of eligibility of additional quantum of pension to the retired judges at the age of 80 years and after that. The question is whether it is from the date on which the judge enters into the age of 80 or after the completion of the age of 80. That is the only simple question to be discussed for which the Guwahati High Court had made a judgment. Against that judgment, a special leave petition was moved by the Government of India in the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court rejected it. The rejection of the special leave petition means it is subject to correction. I am also saying subject to correction that if the opinion is correct, then definitely this is a bad law. It has to be reconsidered. That is my first point which I would like to make. Invalidating a law passed and that too through a mandamus by the Supreme Court is being nullified by this parliament. To give benefit to the retired judges at the fag end of their life is not fair. It is not good enough for such a legislation. That has to be reconsidered. Sir, I would like to speak about some points about separation of powers. I am not going into the details of it. Power tends to corrupt and absolute power corrupts absolutely. This is the basic principle by which the doctrine of separation of powers has been debated since long. The separation of powers was discussed in the constituent assembly but it was not given any constitutional status. There is nowhere in the Constitution of India an explicit provision to deal with the separation of powers except in Article 50 of the Constitution. That is the directive principles of state policy where the separation of judiciary from executive is explicitly explained. Sir, I would like to quote a renowned justice who has said, Enforcement of rigid concept of separation of powers would make modern government impossible. Strict separation of powers is theoretically absurdity and practical impossibility. I feel that this is a pragmatic version because separation of powers is theoretically an absurdity and a practical impossibility for a modern government. I am not going into the details of all these things. The President of India is the Executive Head of India and he is also having the legislative powers when he summons the House. That means separation of powers in a rigid manner is not possible as far as the modern government is concerned. That has to be kept in mind. Sir, Indian perspective of separation of powers is the harmonious balancing of powers among the various organs. The functions and powers of the three organs are well defined and demarcated. All the three organs are supreme in their own spheres as to how to act in accordance with the provisions of the constitution. Keeping this in mind, the Indian judicial system has a big tradition of independent judiciary. Indian judiciary has played a very important and significant role in strengthening the democratic system of our country. The landmark judgments of our judiciary reform the democratic fabric of our country. The credibility of Indian judiciary was the highest once upon a time. But it is quite unfortunate to say that nowadays the credibility of judiciary is under suspicion. It is being questioned from various corners. I can cite so many examples. I am not going into the examples. Sir, parliament is the will of the people. Hence the legislature of parliament is accountable to the people. The main question which I would like to pose is this.
टू होम इज द जुडिशरी अकाउंटेबल द एग्जीक्यूटिव इज अकाउंटेबल टू द पीपल ऑफ इंडिया थ्रू द पार्लियामेंट द पार्लियामेंट और द लेजिस्लेचर इज डायरेक्टली अकाउंटेबल टू द पीपल ऑफ इंडिया बिकॉज दे आर बींग डायरेक्टली इलेक्टेड बाई द पीपल एंड दे हैव टू गो बैक टू द इलेक्ट्रेट फॉर सब्सिक्वेंट इलेक्शन सो द अकाउंटेबिलिटी ऑफ द जुडिशरी हैज टू बी इयर मार्क दैट हैज टू बी डिफाइंड नाउ आई कम टू द पॉइंट रिलेटिंग टू द नेशनल जुडिशियल अपॉइंटमेंट कमीशन एक्ट टू थाउजेंड फोर्टीन विच वॉज स्ट्रक डाउन बाई द सुप्रीम कोर्ट आई फुली अप्रिशिएट दैट इट वॉज वन ऑफ द लैंडमार्क एक्ट विच वॉज ब्रॉट बाई दिस गवर्नमेंट एंड इनेक्टेड बाई द पार्लियामेंट द एंटायर हाउस अप्रिशिएटेड इट वॉट वॉज द अकाउंटेबिलिटी ऑफ द नेशनल जुडिशियल अपॉइंटमेंट कमीशन वॉज इट अकाउंटेबल टू द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन बोथ द हाउसेज ऑफ पार्लियामेंट हैड पास द लेजिस्लेशन ट्वेंटी स्टेट हैड पास द लेजिस्लेशन द प्रेजिडेंट हैड गिवेन एसेंट टू इट एंड इट हैड बिकम एन एक्ट ऑफ पार्लियामेंट आफ्टर इट बिकेम एन एक्ट ऑफ पार्लियामेंट द सुप्रीम कोर्ट स्ट्रक डाउन द लॉ ओनली ऑन द ग्राउंड दैट इट वॉज चेंजिंग द बेसिक कैरेक्टर ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन वॉट वॉज द लॉजिक इन दैट that is why it was being said by the solicitor general and late arun jetli that it is the tyranny of the unelected the parliament and the government should rise to the occasion to protect the legislative supremacy of parliament so i appeal to the government to please bring back the legislation the national judicial appointments commission bill should be brought back and it should be passed by the house the government should have the political courage the government should have the political will to pass that legislation again and constitute the national judicial appointments commission otherwise these things will go on sir finally i would like to say that four members of the judiciary simply struck down that law what is their accountability it means they are not ready to respect the will of the people that is why i am saying that parliament represents the will of the people the will of the people has to be respected judicial reform is the need of the hour so i appeal to the government to come out with a comprehensive legislation so as to implement judicial reforms in our country mr chairman sir i am thankful to you for giving me this opportunity to present my party's views on this piece of legislation which the learned law minister has brought in for passage in this house i am a little surprised that none of my predecessor speakers have expressed any concern about the wording of this bill the import of this bill because i think there is some concern in the manner in which the government has brought this bill i am surprised that every party wholeheartedly has supported this bill since everybody has spoken about everything else except the bill i think i should speak a little bit on the bill and try and enlighten the house as to what the bill attempts to do the government in its wisdom had brought about an amendment both in the supreme court judges salaries act as well as in the high court judges salaries act to insert section 16b in the supreme court judges salaries act and section 17b in the high court judges salaries act to basically cater to aging judges who reach the age of 80 years or above that was the import of this bill now the wording at that point was about that additional quantum of pension or family pension for supreme court judges high court judges and their families and that they are entitled to additional quantum from 80 years to less than 85 years from 85 years to less than 90 years from 90 years to less than 95 years the word from led to some dispute so the guwahati high court and the madhya pradesh high court said that the word from will mean from the day you enter that age i would urge the government to reconsider and not be churlish in these matters we know that it is very difficult to get members and earning members of the bar to become judges the lawyers who are earning handsome amounts in private practice do not want to become high court judges what is the signal you are sending out do you want to slash a year's pension of the judges and their families by doing this is that the right signal we are sending out to the lawyers who are to be persuaded today 
I know the fact that the Chief Justice of High Court had actually called young lawyers into their chambers and personally told them that they had made enough money for themselves and for their families and now it was the time to serve the nation. Therefore, Mr. Chairman, I would urge the government very seriously that this ought to be re-looked at, particularly when we have a new law minister today. I am happy to say that he has sent out all the right signals so far.